Let's learn what is landing.ai with a demo. Landing.ai is a website where you can easily create and deploy computer vision systems. You do not need any background in AI or programming skills. Dr. Andrew Ng and his team have created Landing.ai and that is why I'm so excited to try it out. If you do not know, Dr. Andrew Ng is the founder of Coursera and DeepLearning.ai. He is truly one of the luminaries in the field. All right, without further ado, let's dive right in. The first step is to create a free account, which is straightforward. Once you've created an account, we are ready to start our first project. So to get started, we have to click on this button which says start first project. But before we go there, let's look at these instructions. These are the steps. The very first step is to upload our images. So we are going to upload a bunch of images. And in fact, we are going to actually detect this road microphone. That is our task. We are going to detect uh, road microphones and images. Now, uh, the first step is to upload the image. Then we are going to label these images. And in this case, I'll show you for object detection, which is our task here, we need to create bounding boxes around these objects. The third thing is to train. And finally, we predict, we deploy and predict what the model has uh, learned. Okay, let's get started. So we click on this button and it creates a new project for us. There are three kinds of projects. The first one is called object detection. The second one is called segmentation. And the third one is called classification. Let's look at classification first. In classification, we assign a single label to an image. Now, given an image, let's say it is an image of a cat, our output would be the label cat. Now you can train a classifier, uh, you can train a multi-class classifier so that given an image, you could have cat, dog, vehicle, you could have as many classes as you want if you have enough data. So the input for an image classification problem is an image and the output is a single class label. Now you may be thinking that what happens when if a single image has a cat and a dog? How are you going to classify it? Is it a cat or a dog? Well, that's why we have another problem called object detection, where if there are multiple objects in the same scene, we actually not only specify uh, where it is located, we specify it using a bounding box, and then we also assign it a class label. We say that this bounding box belongs to this class. In other words, you can see here that we have a cat and a dog, and an object detector would return these two bounding boxes, which correspond to the location of the cat and the dog. And it will also assign a class label saying that this is a cat, this is a dog. In addition, it will give you a confidence score, which tells you how confident the algorithm is that this box contains a cat or a dog. So that's object detection. Now let's take it a step further. In image segmentation, the input is an image and the output is a collection of masks. Uh, remember in object detection, the input was an image and the output was a collection of bounding boxes. But you can imagine that the bounding box doesn't actually trace the outline of the object. So in segmentation, we go a step further and we trace out the mask that corresponds to the object. So all the pixels that belong to a particular object, we, we put them together, right? And we assign a label to that mask, cat, dog, etc. So you can just think about these things as the same class of problems, but you're increasing the complexity. In classification, we were simply assigning a sim single label to the entire image. And uh, it's useful in many uh, cases, but if there are multiple objects in the same scene, then it is not useful. In that case, we have to use object detection. And let's say you want to have even higher level of granularity. In that case, you would use image segmentation. But the question you may be thinking is that, why don't we always use image segmentation? Uh, the answer is because it is computationally more expensive and you also have to spend a lot of time labeling your data because when you train a segmentation model, you have to provide these masks, which are very tedious to create. In, uh, in, in 
uh, contrast if you want to create bounding boxes for all your uh, all your objects it is much easier so between the three problems a lot of times the probably the most popular one is object detection and that is what we are going to learn in this demo as well now let's upload our data i have a bunch of images that i'm going to drag and drop right here and the data is now uploading and as you can see it's uploading Let's look at some of the data. So basically I've taken many pictures of this uh, Rode microphone, which I have right here. So I've taken it with different backgrounds. Some of these images are blurry uh, because I want to detect blurry images also. Some of them do not contain the entire microphone. You just need a ton of images of this microphone from different angles. But bear in mind that this is still an easy example. And the reason is that this microphone is uh, doesn't change like if you imagine that if you had to build a cat detector there are many different kinds of cats there are many different kinds of dogs but this road microphone the appearance of this road microphone doesn't change as much and that is why i have just uploaded a bunch of pictures something like 39 or 40 images and i hope that that is going to be sufficient usually for these kinds of uh, problems you don't need a ton because the appearance of these objects do not change you just have to take them with different viewpoints. You probably want it in different lighting conditions and so on and so forth, but nothing complicated. So once you have all the data uh, uploaded, what you're going to do is click on one of them and then it gives you this interface where you are allowed to draw a bounding box. So we just created a bounding box. And as soon as we create the first bounding bo box, it asks me for this information. What is the class label? What is this object that I have created a bounding box uh, around? So I'm going to just create mic. So you can see that microphone is right here, MIC. And I can go to the next uh, image and I can continue doing this bounding box. And because I have already selected mic, I don't have to uh, say that it is a microphone it because it knows it's a microphone. I have selected that label already. Let's say there were cats, dogs, etc. Let's say I was doing a multi-object object detector. In that case, I would have to worry about, um, about doing this. Now, what kind of bounding box is good? How tight do you want? I usually say that as tight as you can, but whatever you do, you have to be consistent. That is the most important thing that whatever, however you mark it, you have to be consistent. So I have decided that I'm going to mark it uh, kind of tight. And that is how it is going to detect also. If you do loose bounding boxes, it will give you a loose bounding box around it. Um, so, and if you make a mistake, you can easily go and change this box slightly so that I want to cover this. Now, uh, you may also want, uh, depending on what your demand is, you may also want uh, some of these, uh, sometimes you want you may want the microphone to be occluded by your own hand. Here also, we are only seeing part of the microphone and I still want to detect it. So I, I have included this in the data set. So um, now let's go a little tighter here and we can keep doing this. All right, so that was our last bounding box. And now our data is all ready. You can see that all the data is here and we are ready. Uh, you can see that they are all showing the right bounding boxes. Now we are ready to train. You can see the button here. I'm going to press it and it will start training. So let's see what happens. Once you start this training, you can see that on this right hand side, there is training in progress. It is provisioning the GPU first, then it's configuring, and then it is training uh, a, a model. Now, uh, in a little bit, you will start seeing a graph here, uh, a curve here, which is called the learning curve. It shows you how the model is learning and how the error is going down. Uh, we will see that 
if your data is correctly labeled and if there is sufficient data, this thing sh should start dropping down. You can see here, it just dropped down and we want to see something in, you know, it's almost as close to the zero uh, level as possible. That's what we want. Uh, but let's see uh, where it goes. So it started training. This is good news that we have started training and the curve, the learning curve is going down. It shows that the model is learning. It's able to predict and it is, um, it is able to do a good job of predicting uh, where it is. So we'll keep it learning for some time and come back when this stops. Now you can see that the error is coming down and it is kind of saturating, but it still has some ways to go. So we can still reduce the error. So let's keep, keep it going. And now you can see that the training has completed and it is calculating the model performance. All right, so the model is done training and you can see that the performance says that the precision as well as recall is 100%. And the reason is uh, very simple that this was a very simple data set. I did not give it a lot of variations. So it can do, it pretty much detects every case. So it learned on this data set and it is uh, giving these results. And I'm not 100% sure how exactly they are splitting the data, how they are augmenting the data. But uh, let's just assume that, uh, you know, these numbers are on a held out test set. So it might be splitting the data, the 39 images that we give them, it might be splitting it into test and training set, and it's reporting the performance on the test set, not on the data it was trained on. But, uh, but I don't know exactly how this is being done because these are very small number of images. And there are a few different strategies where uh, people employ for doing this. So let's do some prediction. Let's see how, uh, how well uh, it does. And I'm going to use uh, the webcam. Uh, okay, I have this webcam here. Let's see. Uh, let's just remove my face. And I'll take a picture. And let's see if it actually detects the camera. And I've given it an easy example, really. So you can see that it detected the uh, road camera. So yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, we can also try uh, again with slightly different, uh, let me make it harder for it. So you can see that this view is much harder than the previous view. The other view, there were several examples. Let's see if it detects. It did detect that view also. And let's try one more view uh, where the road is not visible. And I don't know whether I have this kind of view in the training set or not. Um, so it detects, see the bounding box is not great. And the reason is that I had not given it any example of, uh, the background was very limited. So in this case, what you would do is you would find, you would actually take the picture under different backgrounds. So here clearly it did not do a good job, right? Because the number of images were so small, usually you would take, uh, several hundreds of images with different backgrounds. And if you actually expect that uh, this road microphone would be near a person, you should have uh, in the background people and other things also, right? So uh, it did a reasonable job in uh, other cases uh, here, here, but you can see that it did not do a good job here. It detected the microphone, but the bounding box is too, uh, too broad. It doesn't recognize that this face uh, is not of the person. And this has nothing to do with the model, actually. It has everything to do with the data. These kinds of problems are always fixed by fixing the data, not changing the model. Uh, so landing.ai is not at fault here. It is, uh, it is how the data was collected. And frankly, 39 images are, uh, it's a tiny data set. Even for these kinds of problems, we should have a few hundred data sets, a few hundred images, and also the images should be uh, taken under conditions where, you know, the the test images should be representative uh, of the training set, right? Or the training set should be representative of the test set so that you train on data that you expect in real world. So, okay, so we have done this uh, prediction and everything. This looks uh, great. 
Now we can save the model. Let me name this model. Oh, it's congratulating me. Yeah, thank you. So the model, I'm just going to call it Rode Microphone, okay? So I saved the model. And right after I save the model, it asks me to create an endpoint and deploy. So we can now deploy and, you know, the name is still going to be um, uh, Rode Microphone. What it's going to do is now it's ready to deploy. It is going to create a, a service, you know, uh, a web service that you can poke and it will give you the answer. So very soon we will see the web API that it creates. One thing to note here is that you can also change the confidence threshold below which the object will not be uh, delivered or detected. Uh, you can see here they have given you a curl command. You can use this curl command on your terminal and that's the API that is automatically created for you. So, uh, so if you want to deploy this, you simply use this curl command and that's it. You know, everything has been done for you. It's deployed on the cloud for you. Uh, we went through training, uh, we evaluated how the performance is, and finally it is deployed on the cloud and just took a few minutes. So I think it's a great service and um, you know you have to uh, keep an eye on what kind of data you use for training to get the best results. But something that you can do so quickly, this is amazing. You know, you can impress your boss and people in your office very easily by doing these simple steps. And, uh, you know, the model performance uh, can always be improved by changing the data set. And that's how you should go about this. Landing.ai also has some tutorials, I think, about data centric, uh, data -centric uh, model development, where the idea is that, you know, the model that they have chosen or usually we, we come across, they're usually pretty good. It is usually the problem of the data that uh, needs to be fixed. So in this case, if you're seeing problems, uh, you're not able to get good results, it's go back and check your data, add more data if necessary. And we have, uh, we have uh, you know, we'll also link to some resources that we can provide you to understand uh, some more technical nitty gritty of how training is done. That's all we wanted to cover in this video about landing.ai. It is an easy to use platform for model creation and deployment on the cloud. Currently, three kinds of models are supported and we hope in the future, other models like key point detection will also be supported. It would be great to have support for edge devices as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications. This is Satya Malik signing off, your guide to the fascinating world of computer vision and AI. Thank you.